I'm here in San Francisco with uh, Lucas Deplan, who's the CEO and founder of Clinkle. So can you explain to me a little bit what Clinkle is? Yeah, sure. So Clinkle is a digital wallet for your day-to-day -day transactions. And what does that mean sort of on, for, for me as a consumer? Sure. So our goal is to build uh, the world's finest serious contender to cash and cards. Um, we've seen software change industry after industry uh, over the past 20 years. I don't use an encyclopedia. I use Google, right? right. right? I don't write letters. I have email and Facebook. Um, but you one still of use cash. But you still use cash, right. and you still use you know, a piece of plastic with 16 digits. Right. And so um, the vision for this company is to basically uh, take how we transact and move that from offline to online. And so this vision is, is really sort of caught on in a, in, a, in a big way out here. So you've had some, you have some really high profile backers, Jim Fryer, Peter Thiel. Um, you raised a lot of money and hired a lot of people really fast. Um, so does that feel like a lot of pressure or are you just like excited to be going along for the ride? You know, I'm mostly excited. Um, I was actually watching a YouTube video of Nick Saban, who's yes. the uh, coach of the Alabama football team. Who just team. lost to Auburn. And Who I'm just sure lost to Auburn. Quite but, disappointed yeah, about that. Yeah, but um, he was saying something which really caught my attention, which is when we play football, we don't look at the scoreboard. And the philosophy for his team is, you know, every 30 seconds, you know, put your head down and do the best job you can on that play. Um, and, you know, I found if you let the, pr you know, the, the, the pressure and the stress and the expectations, you know, get to you, you just can't deliver. And so um, my goal has been each play to play it as best I can, you know, come in each day at work, not worrying about yesterday, not worrying about tomorrow, but worrying about today. Um, and so that's been the, the way I've, kind of dealt with it. And you've also, you, you brought in some help. So you, you hired uh, uh, the CEO, the former COO of Netflix. CFO right? of Netflix. CFO, sorry, uh, Barry. McCarthy. And, uh, and, and that, that must be a relief and a help. And how, how do you guys work together and how does that work? Yeah, so I brought Barry on as a trusted business partner. Um, he has a tremendous amount of experience and expertise in business. Um, and just as important, he's an incredibly high integrity person and also um, culturally we're on the same page. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Netflix culture deck and kind of the, the culture no, they've built. No, I think you're going to have to explain that to me. Yeah, so um, it's funny. Each Silicon Valley company takes on a personality of its own, a lot like you know a human being would have. Um, and I think what Reed has done at Netflix is, is really incredible. And, um, you know, you can Google it, but there's a number of tenants which, you know, we um, believe in, that, that Netflix believed in, um, and we're trying to uh, bring here uh, to Clinkle. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Stanford University. And uh, you came out of Stanford, you dropped out of Stanford. To, to I, I finished my degree. I oh, okay, so that's awesome. My, so my many parents of the 30 were highly the 30s didn't, didn't make it, so you, you graduated. Yeah. Um, what is it about the, you know, so many of the people that I'm out here talking to and they're doing really amazing things are coming out of Stanford, and it's a great school, but there are actually many great schools. What do you think it is about that university that really sort of spawns this entrepreneurial sort of culture? Right, well, I think, it starts with who applies, um, because really smart people want to be around other really smart people. Um, and so uh, I think you have to tease out whether it's causation or correlation, um, but you generally have uh, people who want to be entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial uh, apply and, and go there. Um, and then once you get there, um, that spark is really hopefully transformed into a fire right. um, by virtue of the other people who are there, the classes that are there, um, and the resources that the university provides. Um, and so I'm really fortunate um, to have been a part of that um, and certainly feel very lucky. So if we fast forward five years, Lucas, where, where, where are you going to be here? Am I, is Kinkle going to completely, or Kinkle, I'm sorry, Kinkle going to completely replace cash? Or, or what will we be talking about in five years from now? Yeah, so I think the first thing to realize is that really big and hard change doesn't happen overnight. And, and you're Silicon, aiming big, big. We're aiming big, big, but yeah. you know, Silicon Valley has, I think, a really short attention span. And you know, it's, 
hey, there's this new startup and there's you know, 20 kids working on it right. and like tomorrow they're gonna change how the entire monetary <laughs> system works. Um, and uh, maybe that's and how And that's it, no pressure, right? Right, well may, maybe that's how it is in LA and Hollywood movies, right. but um, it takes a lot of work, right? right. And when you think about um, causing real change, especially um, in industries which haven't had much change, um, there's serious things you have to think about. Security, privacy, um, uptime, reliability, I mean, the list goes on and on. And so um, there's, there's a lot of things that we think about and we know we take what we're doing pretty seriously because it's people's money. Um, and so I think uh, our goal isn't to completely wipe out cash and cards in you know, five years, right. but it's to begin this revolution. And maybe it'll take five years, maybe it'll take 10 years, um, but uh, I think the, the key is to be marching in the right direction as opposed to staying stagnant.